For achievement in the professions, we honor Dr. Merritt Sakovich, Chief of Neurology for Massachusetts General Hospital and Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School. If you look up almost any information about discoveries and developments in the treatment of ALS, you will find Merritt's name in that article. She is one of the leading experts in the world and a go-to resource for patients and families. At MGH, Dr. Sakovich directs the organization's ALS program and the Neurological Clinical Research Institute. Her research and her clinical activities are dedicated to the study and treatment with, for people with ALS, including serving as the founder and the past director of the Northeast ALS Consortium, a group of more than 100 international clinical sites dedicated to performing collaborative academic and clinical trials of research studies in ALS. And she's the principal investigator of the NeuroNext network, designed to develop innovative and new treatment with people with neurological disorders. In addition, she mentors many young neurologists in clinical investigation of ALS and related neurodegenerative disorders. Dr. Sakovich defines success as loving what you do each day and sharing that passion with others. She advises young women to have the confidence to pursue their passions while seeking advice and returning what you learn to others. Dr. Sakovich, we are so proud to have you in Greater Boston and so grateful for the advancements in ALS research and treatment. Please accept your Pinnacle Award. I'm so honored to receive this award and excited to be part of this amazing uh, community of accomplished women. When I sat down to write this acknowledgement, I thought about all the people whose influence is responsible for today, and I want to tell you about two, uh, two of them. I want to go back to July 1991, the day I met a woman who would turn out to be a lifelong mentor and role model, Dr. Ann Young. Ann and I started at MGH at the same time, I was a first year neurology resident, and Anne was the new chair of neurology. She was a trailblazer, the first female department chair at Harvard Medical School, and the first woman leader I had ever met. And it was the mid 90s, the genetic revolution was starting, and the first genes ever that caused ALS or Alzheimer's disease and other neurological diseases were discovered, and there was this real hope and belief that we were at the cusp of developing treatments for these disorders, and this is what I wanted to do, and I wanted to do it at MGH. So as a second year resident, I started asking advice from just about everyone except, oddly enough, not from Anne, and all told me that this dream wasn't possible at MGH at this time, and that I should go to the University of Rochester where they had the only neurology clinical trial training program. Now, I was from Buffalo, I grew up in Buffalo, and I was so excited to leave Buffalo to come to Boston. <laughs> and I didn't really love this idea, but I went, and I interviewed with a doctor who also became a long-term long mentor, Dr. Ira Schulson. I didn't know that Ann and I were, were actually best buddies. So when I got back to MGH, Ann called me into her office for an early morning appoint, appointment. Now all of us knew that that was usually not good news. She tended to fire people in the early morning apartments. <laughs> so I was a little scared. But instead, you know, she offered me a job on the spot. But more importantly, she asked me, why did I never speak to her about my dreams and what I wanted to do? She taught me right then and there the importance of speaking up for what you want and to not accept the status quo. She shared her experience how women don't ask for things and they undersell themselves. And that's something I still see today as the chair of neurology. She taught me and so many others not to step out of the ring, but to be bold with your ideas and to support each other and not be as scared to ask for what you want. So being a good mentee in a really quick study, the next year I walked right into her office with a lot of confidence and I asked her for a raise. <laughs> now, Anne, and, and for those of us who know her, she's very excitable, she got up, ran down the hall, screaming that finally a woman had asked her for a raise. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm still not sure to this day that I actually got it, but she was excited. <laughs> 
And let's say, I just want to share a patient story. And, and this is a, a woman, the very first person I ever took care of with ALS. And she has made a, a lasting uh, um, a, a impression on me. She was a teacher, and a really incredible teacher, the kind that students remember all their lives. And she shared with me what she was going through as I took care of her. And she really helped me understand how to be a physician. And, and the impact of an illness like ALS uh, that is far greater than just the symptoms. It affects the whole family and the emotions and that if we're really going to take care of people with serious illnesses and we're gonna find cures and treatments that, that we have to work as teams and partners and multidisciplinary groups. And we have to learn to listen to our patients and our families and work together to conquer these serious illnesses. And her words and her teaching have influenced my philosophy of care and approach to research and how um, we, uh, we approach things at Mass General in Neurology. She also gave me a challenge uh, that I remember to this day. She asked me uh, to promise to never give up, to never stop trying to find a cure for people with ALS. And 20 years later, I believe we are at the cusp of this. We're now enrolling people in a trial uh, for a treatment that turns off the very gene that caused her form of the disease. So she still inspires me today and every day. Thank you. So I'm very honored again to receive this award and I hope it inspires many young women and men to pursue their dreams. Thank you.